the A6 all-road returns to the U.S. for the first time in 15 years. Is this wagon versatile enough to replace your SUVs? Let's find out. I can't thank Circle Audi enough for lending me the A6 all-road. Lissandro or Keith will take great care of you if you're interested in any vehicles in their fleet. The all-road with 20-inch wheels has a nice body to wheel ratio, coupled with a single-frame grille. The Matrix LED headlights work in conjunction with a navigation system to illuminate the road. The Quattro blister fenders adds volume to its seductive hips. And of course, being a wagon, accessing the rooftop to store things like a snowboard or a bike is very easy. The new tail lamps have an intricate surfacing that adds to the visual interest. If there is one gripe, it is of course there are no sporty exhaust tips. Upon opening the door, the sequential tail lamps greet you. And what's nice is that they give you a double Audi ring, not just one. And of course, this $70,000 car has a welcoming sound when you turn it on. After you fire up the car, you can't help but to notice a massive virtual cockpit display. A lot of the buttons are finished in a satin aluminum finish, which adds a sophisticated feel. All of the tech combined with the beautiful ambient lighting makes for a really nice cabin. Unlike Tesla, Audi actually integrates the center screen using the gloss black panel, giving it some shape. If you look carefully, the entire screen clicks down, giving you a haptic feedback. You can also save up to seven drivers Bluetooth devices and personalize the infotainment screen. Let's check out the back seats. With a driver's seat set where a six foot one driver feels comfortable, the back seat offers plenty of knee room and headroom is also good despite having the panoramic sunroof. The back seat has touch control HVAC as well. Here you can see that I'm loading a large size stroller and it easily fits with room to spare for my filming gears on the other side. Various sizes of beverages fit in different places without any issues. And the belt buckles lighting up is a really nice touch. I'm sure I'm not the only one that's experienced looking for them in the dark. You know, I totally get it. Everyone wants the SUVs for a slightly higher ride height for that better visibility and also ease of unloading and loading your child. But did you know that this car is only one inch lower than the Q5 in terms of ground clearance? Certainly that one inch isn't gonna break your back, is it? So even though this is a massive car, it's got all wheel steer to get you out of parking lots. They say up to 37 miles an hour, it'll turn the opposite direction of the front wheels, giving you that more uh, of the maneuverability. Uh, and then anything above that, it'll turn in the same direction to give you high speed stability. Just went down a steep driveway and no problem, right? This car has plenty of ground clearance. Another little bumpy surface here, nothing. Don't feel anything. This adaptive air suspension does a great job blocking out all of the bumps and dips on the road. What's interesting to me is that they use a 12.2 to 1 steering ratio, which is extremely quick for a large car like this. Here we go, tight turn. And for such a large car, that all-wheel steer, it just helps out tremendously. And the brand new Quattro system with the Ultra, I was afraid that, you know, a lot of the all-wheel drive systems that come on and off, it doesn't really work properly. But of course, being an Audi, it's uh, on, pretty much always on. It just decouples the rear wheels. So rest assured that you always have great traction in this car. Yeah, going through a turn now, even in dynamic mode, it has plenty of roll actually. It drives like a big car. I'm a little bit surprised because the Range Rover Sport was actually a little bit more taut than this car in terms of the suspension and the way the chassis is controlled. That's uh, really surprising. 
I suppose this is not an S or RS variant. And of course, this car being 4,500 pounds, it's also not a lightweight vehicle either. But mind you, it does tow up to 5,000 pounds. And this car also, when you're towing, it gives you that tra trail assist feature where you can reverse without having to worry too much. They got rid of the ZF 8-speed and replaced it back with the 7-speed S-Tronic. And I'm in the manual mode, driving it by myself. It's not as snappy as the ZF 8-speed. Um, I find it interesting that the S and the RS variants get the, the ZF transmission and the regular cars have the S-Tronic again. Um, it's probably more for the torque output. The ZFs just can take a lot more beating. Um, I would say, of all the DCTs I've driven recently, um, it, it feels a little bit more of the yesterday's transmission. It doesn't have the, the quick shifting response that I would like. But this engine is super smooth. Here, I'm just going to get on it a little bit here. Drop a few gears on our own. <laughs> I had no idea how fast I was going. Jeez. I'm gonna drop it back to drive. This cabin is extremely quiet. A little bit of turbo lag and the throttle response is a slightly delayed feel. But you know, I'm just coming back from driving on M2 competition, so not apples to apples. I need to drive the RS6 Avant. Let's drop it back in comfort. And of course, with the mild hybrid system, the 48 volt, everything's completely turned off, but going off on its way out is extremely smooth. It's not even noticeable and it comes back to life. Very, very quiet and smooth. This car just feels right at home in its comfort mode. Yeah, I wouldn't even bother putting it in dynamic mode, to be honest. Just a super cushy ride. And you know, a lot of automotive journalists just talk about how much the Audi's understeer and it's just not a fun car to drive. But when you're carrying all your stuff and your family members, do you really want the rear end to step out? I think what you need is perfect traction and stability. The drag coefficient coming in at 0.29, of course, compared to any SUVs, that's kind of a block shape. You know, you're not gonna be fighting the wind as you travel in high speed, going the long distance cruising. So that's also something for you to consider if you're driving wagons in a long distance. It's just going to be a lot more comfortable driving experience. In some dips and bumps, you can tell the car's weight a bit. But for the most part, it just feels like it's riding on cloud. It's so smooth. It's hard to believe that it's on 20-inch wheels, actually. Oh, man, I could get used to this effortless speed. <sighs> this is a cruiser. You can definitely golf up a lot of distance in this car without any fatigue. So it's been a few days since I've had the chance to collect my thoughts. Although the A6 Allroad is a super comfortable cruiser, it just doesn't have the sporting feel I'm looking for, even when I've put the car in dynamic mode. I know that this isn't an S or an RS variant, but even in comparison to the E-Class wagon or a behemoth of a vehicle like the Range Rover Sport, the A6 Avant has more body roll and less chassis confidence. Although its cabin has nice details, the quality of leather was also a bit disappointing as well. Audi isn't the only one, but it's really frustrating to see all the wagon offerings in Europe, only to get shafted from lack of consumer interest in the North American market. Usually automotive journalists love any kind of wagon, but I would save up some more and buy the fire-breeding RS6 Avant. Or, give up some space and do the A4 all-road for the driving dynamics. Thanks for staying till the end of the video. If you like our content, please subscribe and stay tuned for more.